Here at the Nerd is in, I'm always on the lookout for good utilities. It's even better if they're free. Two of my favorites are CPU-Z and GPU-Z. CPU-Z does, well, let me just show you these utilities. I think you'll like them. So I want to talk about two of my favorite free utilities that I use on the PC, and that would be CPU-Z and GPU-Z. So let me start out by showing you the location to download these utilities. So here I've jumped into my Firefox web browser and gone to DuckDuckGo and just put in CPU-Z. Now the thing you have to watch out for when you do this is where should you download it from? Okay, You don't want to get it from download.cnet.com. You don't want to get it from wherever this is. This is not the real website. You want to get CPU-Z from www.cpuid.com. This is the official website for CPU-Z. So just be careful about typing something into a web browser search engine and clicking on the first link you see because you're liable to get a virus instead of the utility. Now, CPU-Z, if I go to their website and I scroll down, I can just download the setup program and install the program. Same thing for GPU-Z. Be careful if what you type in. Now, I know for a fact that you get GPU-Z from www techpowerup.com. You don't want to go to download.cnet.com because sometimes CNET actually puts an extra installer on your computer that's wrapped around these programs. And just watch out for some of these weird websites because it's just a really good way to get a virus. So here is the official website for GPU-Z and here is the download link. Tech Power Up GPU-Z. Now, once you've downloaded these and installed them to run them, I just have a shortcut on my desktop. I'm going to run CPU-Z here, and it needs admin rights, so it's asking me to say yes. Now, this is off screen, so you won't see it. It says, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And I'm going to say yes, and it's initializing CPU-Z, and now it's up and running. A nice little compact screen. Now once it launches, it brings you up to the CPU tab, which tells us about the CPU in your computer. So on my laptop here, I have an Intel Core i5-8250U. It's the mobile version of the i5 processor. It's code name Skylake. It's a maximum of 15 watts of power. I'm sure it can turbo boost a little bit over that. And then I can see my current clock speed is jumping around because of demand. It, these CPUs will dynamically clock according to need. Now it gives me a summary of some other information like my cache memory. Remember cache L1, L2, and L3 cache is high speed RAM that is built into the CPU tab. And I'm going to talk about this more when I go to the caches tab. But this is a quad core processor and it is hyper threading because it can run eight threads. Now, and here's a little icon. Here's the little logo for the core i5 inside. If I go to caches, it's telling me that my level one data cache is 32 kilobytes in size times four because I have four data caches because I have four CPUs. This is a quad core CPU and I have 32 kilobytes of level one instruction cache and once again that's times four because it's per processor. So this 32 kilobytes is holding the data that that core is currently working with and it's running at full CPU speed. This 32 kilobytes is holding the instructions that are currently being run in that CPU core, and it's running at full speed. Now, faster than RAM, a lot faster than RAM, but not as fast as level 1 cache on the CPU chip is the level 2 cache. And there's 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache, and that's per core. It's times 4. 
And then finally, we have a level 3 cache that is still slower than L2. And remember, L2 is slower than L1, but it's still on the CPU die, and I have 6 megabytes of level 3 cache. And this is shared across all the processors, so I can see how much of that high-speed cache I have. Now you may ask yourself, 32 kilobytes of data cache and 32 kilobytes of instruction cache? But I have 16 gigabytes of RAM on my computer. How, how can that help my computer to run fast? Well, code runs in loops, tight loops that are a few thousand bytes in size. And these loops will run millions of times. Once that loop is loaded into the CPU, it can run at the full 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, whatever the speed of the CPU is, and most of those loops are not working with a lot of data, a few thousand bytes of data. So that gets loaded in the CPU into the cache and we can keep running. Now if we have a cache miss, in other words, what we need is not in the level 1 cache, the CPU then goes to check to see if it's in the level 2 cache, which is quite a bit larger, 256 kilobytes, and then finally if it's not in the level 2 cache, it looks to see if it's in, in this case, in the 6 megabytes of level 3 cache. And then finally, if it's not there, the CPU has to pause the execution of that process or that thread and go get the data or the instructions out of RAM. So the memory controller in the CPU is intelligently loading up this cache with the needed data. Here's D cache, data cache and the needed instructions before they are needed. And about 95% of the time, that stuff gets preloaded into the CPU so the CPU can keep running. Primarily, the difference you see in the amount of cache here is like a high-end processor will have more of each type of cache. Probably not at level 1, but level 2 and level 3 can be quite a bit larger depending on the processor. If I go to the main board tab, it will tell me about the motherboard maker. This is an HP laptop, so it's an HP manufacturer. It gives me a model number and it gives me a little bit of information about the BIOS, like my BIOS version and the date of the BIOS. And more of interest is I can now go to the memory tab. So the memory tab tells me I have DDR4 memory. It's dual channel, so I have two memory slots. And I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, and here is the DRAM frequency and latency numbers. Latency is the delay it takes between when something is requested from RAM and the memory controller can look it up and deliver it back, how many clock cycles it takes. Now, this doesn't tell me anything about my specific memory slots, but if I go to the SPD tab, it will show me on a slot basis each memory stick that is in my computer. So in slot number one, I have DDR4, 8 gigabytes. It's Kingston. Uh, the DRAM manufacturer is actually Micron, and this is the speed it's running. This is the model number. It's DDR4-2666-2666. Now down here under the timing tables, this tells me what speeds of memory this CPU supports. So it supports memory running at the frequency of uh, 1333, and the only difference is it supports different latencies of memory. So if I buy memory that runs faster than 1333, I'm wasting my money because this CPU, this motherboard, will not support it. If I, if I buy memory that has a latency lower than a CAS latency lower than 20, I'm throwing some of my money away. So you want to look at that. Now that's slot one. I have a DDR4 stick, 8 gigabytes. If I hit the drop down and go to slot two, I can see I have the same speed of memory, It's but it's from Crucial Technology. That's the memory I bought to bump this computer from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. But once again, the chips that are actually on the memory stick are from Micron. So I can see exactly what memory I have in each slot and if a slot is empty. Uh, graphics, it just tells me very little about the graphics in CPU-Z. It tells me what I'm going to expect on this laptop is I have integrated graphics that's part of the CPU. That's UHD Graphics 620. 
And that's just the built-in graphics that's part of the CPU, nothing fancy there. Now, one of the interesting things you can do in CPU-Z is you can come over here and you can run a benchmark on the CPU to get a benchmark number. So I'll start that running and it's running multi-thread test across several of the cores and it's going to run a single thread test for a single process. Now, I can hit a reference CPU, I can hit my drop down here and say let's compare this to the Intel Core i9-7980. So single core performance is not that dramatically different between the two CPUs, but since the Core i9 has 18 cores and 36 threads, its multi-core is of course a lot faster than my 4 and 8 the eight threads that I can run with my process, my processor, my CPU has eight threads that can run, and the Intel i9 can run 36 threads. So, like, I could hit a drop down here and go to the uh, uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper, and you can see similar performance. It's quite a bit faster in multi-threaded environments because it can run 32 threads. So now you can run a quick benchmark, you can run a stress test on the CPU to just to see, to make sure the computer is not overheating, this will get everything up and going. So that's the benchmark. The About tab is just telling us, is just telling us about this version of CPU ID. So it's a great little utility to very quickly see which CPU you have in your computer and I use it a lot to see what memory sticks I have in a computer so I do not have to open it up. Lots of interesting information. You can get a quick model number of your video card and if you want to get more detailed information on your video card you need to use not CPU-Z but we're going to go to the other utility Tech Power Up GPU-Z. Now once again it says you gotta have admin rights and it's initializing and it's, I'm not going to have a whole lot I can show you here on GPU-Z because I have integrated graphics on this computer where I'm recording so once again it says the name of my graphics card is UDH Graphics 620 and you get some nice pop-ups it says it's a it's a KB Lake processor 14 nanometer uh, it says that this video will support DirectX 12. Gives me some information about the number of shaders I have. And one of the things you'll see is this is memory size in A. That's because there is no dedicated video RAM on this laptop. You would typically see with an if you had a discrete video card plugged into a desktop, you might see four gigabytes, eight gigabytes. A really high end video card might card might have sixteen gigabytes of its own RAM on the card. And of course, the more the better. Now, if I had multiple video cards, I could come here and down here and hit my drop down and switch to the other video card and get the stats on that one. Now, the sensors tab will tell me uh, clock speed of my GPU and my memory clock. It can also show me my GPU temperature, which is kind of important if you want to see if you're having heating problems with your video card. So you could go in, start running uh, GPU-Z, jump into your game, hit the Windows button, get back out to the desktop, and check your temperature over time. You see how it's, it's giving me a little graph, and I can see other information about... Uh, what's going on with my video card, like how much RAM I'm using at the time. My CPU temperature and my GPU temperature should be basically the same in this case because they're on the same die. The graphics is built into the CPU chip. And you've got some other stuff you can look up here, but nothing too exciting. Uh, but this will tell you what model video card you have. That way you can find out if you have an NVIDIA are an AMD and ATI video card so you know which website to go to to get the latest and greatest video driver. So this utility comes in very handy and I recommend both of these utilities highly. Because free is good. But you should consider supporting these uh, utilities. 
Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this, found this useful, please like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.